So YouTube is releasing creator music. They're slowly rolling this out right now to users across the US. And then at, once they get out of beta for this, then of course it's going to be going to people in other countries all over the internet. People are super excited about this. And through the comments that people are leaving about this, there's a lot of misunderstandings about how it's actually going to work. And also there's a big, amount of information that YouTube is not sharing with you. They share it with you, but don't let me correct that. They share it with you, but they are not making it explicitly obvious. So they're messing that up and it's going to cause a lot of content creators to use the music improperly or to use it in places that they shouldn't. And it's going to end up backfiring for a lot of creators because YouTube is not doing a fantastic job at getting the information out there. So for example, Everything, all the screenshots that I'm getting ready to show you about how this can work against you is stuff that is publicly available, but it's in a place that a lot of content creators don't even know about. So YouTube has a, um, a help resource uh, area and it's all documentation about how to use all the different features and things like that. So once they started rolling this out, um, I was actually having dinner with my brother and we were going through the FAQs and going through all the, you know, pages about it while we were, you know, having some pizza and all of that. And, um, during that we we're like, Holy cow, I can't believe they didn't mention this in the video and Holy cow. I can't believe they mentioned this in the video. And if people do this, they're going to end up, you know, getting in all, having all kinds of issues with this. So I, you know, came home and I was like, Hey, I have a little bit of time before I have to hop on a um, uh, like a, a podcast. So I was like, let me go ahead and just do a live stream and spread some of this information so that you don't get yourself caught up in the, uh, you know, the, the, the kind of collateral damage of what, what it is that's going on here with creator music. So first, what creator music is, is it is a music service that um, YouTube has or is slowly rolling out. And as part of that music, service, you are going to be able to, and of course, this is with a ton of disclaimers, you are going to be able to use popular music and just other music in your YouTube videos um, with either purchasing the license to the music that you can use or through revenue sharing. And that sounds simple at the surface, but it's actually extremely complicated. And we're going to talk about that today. So to get started, um, the very first thing that I just want to show you in terms of what it is that that I'm getting ready to take you through here. And I was making all of these slides in Photoshop and I was like, I'm just going to leave them in Photoshop. We're running out of time. Let's just, you know, do the thing. So um, one of the first ones I want to bring to your attention here is you're going to notice and we're actually going to hop in the FAQ page here in just a minute. I'm actually going to show you, you know, where all this is. But right here they say expiration. So if you get a song out of creator music, and you are using it in your YouTube video. Once your license, when your license duration starts when you buy the license, when that license expires though, monetization terms and vis visibility may change for a video that uses a track with an expired license. Also, any video that uses a licensed track may no longer be protected from copyright claims once that track's license expires. So let that sink in for a minute in terms of, you know, exactly how that can impact content creators. So if you tap into this, if the license expires, then in that particular case, if the company, the rights holders don't decide to extend your, uh, your ability to get your license, then you are putting everything at risk essentially by having them be able to issue claims on your videos. Okay. So that's number one, and I've got a bunch of them here, and then we're also gonna go through the YouTube help pages as well. But as we get into this, um, I'm gonna be showing a lot of screenshots and all that, so just kind of buckle in and um, and get ready get ready for this. Because again, you know, one thing, I, a disclaimer I wanna put out is you guys all know that I am, you know, pro YouTube. You know, I make my living off of it. I teach you guys how to do it so that in the future you can make your living off of it, or, you know, you currently are. I'm a huge advocate for YouTube, but one thing that they are really bad at is their messaging and getting out the right information that people need to know so that they don't run into problems, right? So one of the other ones that I want to bring to your attention here is they're showing, um, you know, usage requirements for revenue sharing. So I'm just going to go to some, you know, some highlight points. You can see I have those marked on the screen right now. But um, one of the areas here, one of the headings is for track and video duration. So they say the video uses an appropriate amount of the track um, in an appropriate length of video. If the track is licensable, 
but you don't want to buy a license, you can share revenue by using the track for less than 30 seconds in a video that's longer than three minutes. So if you use a track for less than 30 seconds, then you are going to open yourself up to having to share revenue for your entire YouTube video, even though you used it for that. But that's understandable, it's part of the deal, right? But let's move on. So as part of this, YouTube has not mentioned that they did mention that you're not allowed to, uh, or that the licensing for this and the licensing for YouTube Shorts is different. They, I, I have ran across in that um, video that they put out about it, um, they did mention that. So if you want to use music from YouTube Shorts, you need to make sure that you're actually doing that through the add music option in YouTube Shorts. This is something that is completely different. If you try to use these songs in your YouTube Shorts, then it can run you into issues. The same exact thing for those of you that are live streamers. So they are not allowing currently, this may change in the, in the future, I have no idea, but currently they say that no live streams or shorts. The video can't be a live stream or a short. So you wanna make sure that you are aware of that. Next, they say that here, um, remember the usage, the usage requirements can change at the right holders, the rights holders discretion. So for example, after you've uploaded a video that uses a revenue sharing track, the rights holder could later disable monetization for the track, which would disable monetation, monetization for your video. Changes to usage terms can apply in certain territories or all territories. So what I pick up from this is that if, you, if you're using a song in your video and you are monetizing that video, let's say that you are established, an established content creator, let's say you're getting millions of views on your video and you're like, hey, let me use some of this popular music in here and you do, well, if that rights holder down the road says, hey, we don't wanna make this monetizable anymore and they shut it down, then guess what happens to your income as a content creator besides, because you decided to use those tracks, right? So, um, so because of that, you just wanna make sure that you are being mindful of the, those types of things. The next one. So one of the questions that we always get about, you know, these types of things when they, you know, when they do release, you know, new features or, you know, when it comes to ad sharing and stuff. And I know some of you that are hanging out in here are in the partner program already and have established channels. Um, some of you are new content creators. You're just getting started. But as part of this, just as a heads up, if you are already in the YouTube partner program, because you have to be in order to be able to use this service. But if you're in the YouTube partner program from your share, Right, so this the your split that you're making with these companies, it's not coming from, you know, like YouTube and you and them are splitting it. It's you are splitting your cut with the rights holders, which I mean, it makes sense. That's not a bad thing because you know that's how licensing works and all that. Because you're the person using it, you should be responsible. But what I'm trying to do is just let you know, in terms of the percentage that you're going to lose, um, you're going to lose you know, the cut that YouTube takes that 45, and then you're also going to lose the additional split from have, from, from using um, some of this music. So I just wanna make sure that you're aware of that. So what some of this looks like, um, as you can see right here, if you're using one, um, one revenue sharing track, you can see right here that it brings you all the way down to, you know, 25%. Um, in this particular example, it brings you down to 16% of your earnings. So if you are, you know, let, let's say you just fill up your, you know, say you fill up your video with a bunch of songs. Like, is that going to take you like all the way down to zero? Like, how's that, how's that going to work? But anyway, like the, um, you know, like the more that you're using, the more it's cutting into your, uh, over overall revenue, which is, uh, which is crazy. But then they say, um, you know, getting started with creator music. And I meant to show this one first because this was kind of the buildup, but it says creator uh, music is a growing catalog of high quality music that creators can use in their videos without losing monetization. And then I was going to show those other things in terms of how much monetization you actually lose. Like it's semantics, but you don't technically lose your monetization because you're, you know, using the service, you're paying to use the service, but depending on you know how many songs you use and all of that, the amount of money that you're gonna walk away from your video in terms of the percentage that you're earning is gonna be significantly less um, if you you know are uh, if you're if you're if you're using this. Um, we see here we got through those, we got through those. And then here, 
Um, another thing that is is uncomfortable, I think, and I, my I, I'm guessing that the reason that they're doing this is because the you know like if you have a larger channel, the likelihood of you getting a lot more views is typically you know pretty high. But one thing that they're doing on this as well, when it comes to the pricing, they say music partners that own the rights to the tracks can set the licensing prices. Keep in mind that some tracks have a set price for all creators, while others may have customized pricing on your channel size. So this is one of those rare opportunities that big YouTube channels get to get discriminated, uh, discriminated against on YouTube as well. So if you're somebody that is, you know, has a large channel, getting lots of views, things like that, then you might have to pay, you know, a few extra bucks um, in order to, you know, use the track. So your success on YouTube is actually being penalized um, in this particular situation. But you know, with the, you know, to be fair, right? Cause I don't want to, you know, just, just make it sound horrible because it's not, it's a cool service. But um, the fact that they can change the licensing options on you, the fact that that can end up, you know, coming back to get you in the back end, the fact that the uh, amount of money that they're taking from uh, content creators, not YouTube, but the rights holders, um, as well as, you know, the percentage that you're already giving YouTube and all of that, it's just not making any sense to me in my brain in order, like in terms of why somebody would want to use this. But anyway, um, can I use tracks licensed from Creator Music on other platforms besides YouTube? This is one of those things that they just weren't clear about that you need to make sure that you know about. Um, this isn't a bad thing. This also makes total sense because you're licensing it to use it on YouTube. But in this particular case, they say that if you license a track from their Creator Music, you can only use the track in videos uploaded to YouTube. So for those of you that are, let's say, marketers and you're repurposing your content all over the place, or let's say that you are uploading videos to YouTube long form and then you're sampling out clips and all of that so that you can put them on other platforms. If you do that, it can get you into copyright issues on others of those other platforms because you do not have the rights to use the music in those in that capacity. Um, in addition to that, the other uh, another FAQ that popped up is what happens to a video when the license expires. So they say that you may be able to renew your license. You may. Um, if you don't renew a license, the music's usage terms may default back to revenue sharing terms if the track is eligible for revenue sharing, so that's fair. But then they say, otherwise, the video may have monetization or visibility restrictions since it would be at risk for getting a copyright, or sorry, a content ID claim or a copyright removal request once the track in the video is not licensed or sharing revenue. So if you are using the service and, you know, it, it gets changed to where, you know, they, you know, update the, the license for it and, uh, you know, you can essentially get thrown under the bus um, in this particular situation, which is another thing that, you know, I'm not a fan of. Um, but let's see here. We already talked about this in terms of if the track is licensable, using it for that 30 seconds. So here we go. So another one is on the amount of the song. So the amount of the song they say here refers to how much of the track the rights holders are allowing to be used in the video. For any licensable track you choose to license, you can use as much of the song as you want in any video of any duration. So to unpack the difference between the buying the license and sharing the revenue. So if you have it under 30 seconds, then in that case, you know, you can share the revenue for it. Um, and if you are buying it, then that gives you the permission to, you know, to use it in a much longer video. But they say here for licensable tracks, you don't want to buy a license for, you can instead choose to share the revenue. If the amount of the song that you use is less than 30 seconds in a video that's longer than three minutes. So what that means is, you can do some revenue sharing if your video is over three minutes long, but the amount of the song that you use has to be less than 30 seconds. So I don't know what you think, but to me, this seems really complicated. Us as, you know, professionals, like if this is something that you are, you know, going to be using a service that you're going to be using, it's important to get caught up on the rules and all of this and that you do understand, you know, how you can and you can and cannot use copyright protected material, especially in this scenario. But the idea, is, uh, you know, it's just kind of weird, not weird. It's just, it's, I don't understand why somebody would even opt into this, just being, you know, transparent here. Um, but then they say other details on the usage license is only YouTube audio, audio library licenses are valid to use in multiple videos uploaded to YouTube. All other creator music paid licenses are valid for one use in a single video uploaded to YouTube only. Again, this is fair, totally fair. This is how licensing works, you know, when it comes to music, totally cool. 
However, this is another thing that is complicated that they haven't made clear. So I just wanted to make sure that you know about that so you don't get yourself in trouble. Uh, you know, because some people might look at this and they might say like, oh, sweet, I'm gonna take this popular song and I'm gonna make it part of my video intro, right? And, and I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm gonna do that in every single video. You can't, you can't do that. So I'm just trying to, you know, make sure that you know that. They also say that creator music licenses are not transferable to other platforms or other YouTube channels. Um, you know, you can't, put it on other other platforms or you can't buy it and give it to a buddy. Um, creator music licenses can be transferred to other videos within a YouTube channel if they haven't already been used in a published video. So um, let's see here. So let's jump into the actual FAQ. Let me take this one um, down here really quick. And we're gonna jump into the actual FAQ page right here. We're gonna run through this just a little bit so that I can make sure that you have, um, you know, the information that you need here. So let me refresh this. And we are going to switch my StreamYard screen. So let me this. That didn't work out like I thought. Got a little bit of feedback there. And let me go to present, share screen, window, and this one. Okay. So now that we have this one up, this is the... This is the page, and I've got a link to this down in the description if you wanna follow along or if you wanna research this later you know, on your own. Um, but basically, when you click into this area, this is the YouTube help pages. So it's support slash google.com, and then you can do a slash YouTube, and that will bring you into this area. As a content creator, it's important that you know about this particular area of information because there's a lot of really good information that you can get out of here, and you can make sure that you're educating yourself on all of the you know nuances of YouTube so you can keep yourself out of trouble plus so you can thrive you know as well but um as we go down through this particular list up here at the top, you know, they just talk about this. I showed you the screenshot of this, but for those of you that are just joining us, um, Creator Music is a growing catalog provided by YouTube. Uh, well, not provided by YouTube. We'll say that YouTube is the, uh, you know, person in the middle of it, of high quality music that creates or that creators can use in videos without losing monetization. Some songs can be licensed up front, allowing creators to retain full monetization. Other songs may be eligible to share revenue with the tracks rights holder. And then they have the thing for the video here, which I also have linked down in the, de the description. But a lot of this right here, they're just talking about, you know, how to find tracks and, you know, things like that. But what I want to get into here is the, um, is the licensing part. So once we get into the licensing, this is where some of those screenshots came in where things start getting, um, you know, really complicated when it comes to all of this. So um, let's see here in Creator Music, that's actually how you get a license. So we'll skip all of that, removing a license, more info, restrictions on using a license and FAQ. Okay, here we go. I think this is the area that I was looking for. Nope, hold on. There we go. Okay, so what's a license? So again, this is information that you need to know if you are even considering even a little bit using this service. We're gonna go through this really quick because this is just you know common um, you know questions that they know that we're gonna be asking. So at first, what is a license? So a license gives someone legal permission to use content that other people own the rights to. So any reference that I just made or that I'm gonna be making in the future to a license, that's what that is. Um, with Creator Music, they've streamlined the process of interacting with these right ho rights holders on YouTube. And then of course, you can find out more about licensing in the Help Center. And then um, when you pay for a license, you can pay directly in Creator Music Storefront or when you upload a video. So what this means is when you are uploading your video, if you forgot um, to you know, get the track or something like that, or if it identifies one of your tracks, then it will give you the option to purchase it at that point in time, as long as you are in the YouTube Partner Program. Again, if you're not in the YouTube Partner Program, you're not even gonna get access to this yet because YouTube can't make money um, you know, YouTube can't make money off of you and they, you know, the, the rights holders won't be able to make money off of you either. I mean, technically they could still kind of force ads, but they're just not doing that right now. I mean, they do it, but not for this. Um, if I buy a license, does that mean that I own the music now? No. So if you buy a license, and this is common, um, it doesn't mean that you own the music, it means that you're buying permission to use the music. So you're kind of renting it. <laughs> Specifically, you're buying a single use sync license that allows you to sync a video with the music that you're licensing, subject to the license terms and conditions. Um, as we keep going here, they are here, the question is how are license prices decided and can they change? Music partners can own the rights to the tracks um, and set the license prices. Keep in mind that some tracks have a set price for all creators while others may have customized pricing based on your channel size. Now, this is one of the screenshots that I shared when I was highlighting the fact that they are, um, you know, penalizing 
established content creators for having successful YouTube channels and getting a lot of views. But I'm guessing, again, like I said, when I was showing that screenshot, I'm guessing it's because they are anticipating that they're going to get a lot more views on it. And when you get a lot, you know, a lot of views and things like that, um, apparently that's going to make a difference in the, um, in the license. But prices of the licenses are subject to change during, um, at the discretion of the rights holder. So what that means is essentially if you pick a particular song that you're going to use, um, if you're like, hey, this is the one I want to use, you might check in, you know, a few days later, they might have updated it and increased the price or something like that, or maybe even reduced the price. But it just means that, you know, what you're seeing in one moment may not be constant with another. And then let's see here, if the price changes, does that impact my previous purchase? Any licensing pricing changes won't affect your past license purchases and usage. So, you know, once you get it and you get it secured for that price, then you're gonna be good to go. Um, what happens if I don't purchase the license? So this is gonna be a, a heavy question. I'm sure I'm probably gonna get this on live streams a lot, but I use the track in my video anyway. So the scenario here is you just find a song that you like and you're like, hey, I'm gonna use that in the video. They say that some licensable songs in creator music are available for revenue sharing. This means the video's revenue will be split between you and the song's rights holders. Um, other songs that aren't available for licensing or revenue sharing may result in a content ID claim or a content re uh, copyright removal request, just like always, on your video that prevents you from monetizing altogether. Um, you can check usage details in Creator Music to see which ones apply to each individual track. So when it comes to checking the usage details, um, they they also give you this information here. And again, you can find all of this through the links that I put down in the description, um, but that will help you get more you know, insight into when you do start using the Creator Music service on what each icon means and you know how to make sure that you are using the right licenses or the right songs that will allow you to use it in the right way that you want to use it. Um, if I buy a, loose, uh, a license, can I use the license track in multiple videos? They currently only support the single licenses, which is the same thing that um, we talked about a minute ago. Can I use multiple license tracks in the same video? So here's the thing where they say, yes, you can. There's no limit to the number of licenses that can be added to a video. Keep in mind that you must clear the necessary rights to all content in a video to be able to monetize. So in order to monetize, they're basically saying that you have to clear each of the individual songs that you are using and keep in mind that that screenshot that I showed you earlier in terms of the percentage breakdown, when you're using more, you're losing more, okay? So when you're using more tracks, you're losing more uh, revenue. In addition to that, they say, can I use tracks licensed from Creator Music on other platforms? We talked about that one already, but the answer to that is no for the short answer. Can I get a copyright claim even though I license the content? They say licensing a track from Creator Music should prevent you from getting a copyright ID claim or a copyright takedown I'm actually excited to see how this actually plays out. Like if it, like if we're just being honest, I'm excited to see how it plays out, but they say for um, uh, takedown for use of that track, if you believe that you got a copyright claim on your license track in error, please reach out to creator support and they'll yeah, you know try to look into it for you. But they say, keep in mind that if your video does contain other copyright protected content, that the other content is subject to a copyright claim. And then of course you can learn more about that in their content ID section. And this, this is the one that like really bothers me, but they say, what happens to a video in the license expires. You may be able to renew your license. If you don't renew it, the music usage terms may default back to revenue sharing terms if the track is eligible for revenue sharing. Otherwise, and this is the most scary part about this, otherwise, the video may have monetization or visibility restrictions since it would be at risk for getting a copyright ID claim or copyright removal request once the track in the video is not licensed for revenue sharing. So, you know, when it comes to this, the reason I wanted to, you know, just bring this to everyone's attention is because, you know, you're going to see a lot of hype about this on, you know, Facebook. You'll probably see people talking about it on Twitter. You'll see people talking about it on TikTok. And everybody's going to be like, hey, this is like the, you know, the greatest thing ever. Everybody's going to be able to use, uh, you know, licensed music and all of that. But as of right now, it's limited to YouTube content creators in the YouTube partner program. So as of this moment, um, if you are not in the partner program, like you can't even use them anyway. Um, but if you are in the partner program, if you have a normal channel, I guess, then in that case, the amount that you're gonna pay for everything is going to be a standard or normal also, I guess. But if you have an established channel, then of course, you know, you're know you going to end up paying you know a little bit extra for that. But you're making all that you know ad revenue and those other revenue sources. So you can cover the cost if you need to. But the idea and the most important part of this that I'm trying to, or that I just wanted to bring to your attention is that 
when it comes to copyright music, um, it is complicated. Um, we have a music service called creatormix.com where it's all free music. And I, I, I'm, I'm mentioning that really quick and I didn't want this to be like a, you know, sales thing for that or, to, you know, to spread awareness about that. Cause that's not my intention here, but when it comes to using music, the reason I mentioned that is because through that process and through all the stuff that D's had to go through, my brother D, and understanding all of those things as it relates to it there, um, it really opened our eyes into how complicated all this stuff is and why there are so many problems with copyright on YouTube. But at the core of everything, though, the reason I, I really wanted to have this stream is because everybody's getting excited about it and everybody's seeing this through the lens of this is kind of going to open everybody up to just music and they can kind of do whatever they want. But just keep in mind, there are costs involved with it, not just costs in terms of, you know, like money that you're spending, but costs and risks that you're taking by using some of the music. So, you know, hopefully they'll be able to get things fine tuned over time to where it won't be as risky. But, you know, right now at this moment in time, um, I'm not going to use it just because I don't want to have my hard work to where, you know, a year down the road or two years down the road or something, if a license changes in a song that I'm using where they can just take my video down um, or, you know, not show my video in certain places just because it has those songs attached or worse, like in some of those screenshots that I was showing, um, you know, to where it might expire. And then I might, you know, end up with like a copyright, you know, claim or a copyright strike. And remember, we only get three of those on our YouTube channel and then it's curtains. So in that scenario, let's say that you have over the next year, you build up your entire YouTube channel where you're like, hey, I'm using all these popular songs, not a big deal. I'm like revenue sharing or, you know, I'm buying licenses to them, not a big deal. Five years down the road, things change a little bit. Wham, you get hit with, uh, you know, five different license holders that are like, oh, hey, or one company that decides to change their relationship with how they're, you know, working with creators. And then you end up being the person that is on the fallout side of that in terms of you're the one that gets impacted with that. So I just wanted to make sure that, you know, if you're watching my videos, I want to make sure that you are just aware that, you know, that, you know, this is a risky thing, but it's also awesome. Like, you know, as long as you can play by the rules and as long as the rights holders, you know, continue to let people use it like very very long term and things like that. It's actually a really cool thing, but it's just like I said before, there are risks involved. So you got to make sure that you're just aware. Um, I've got links and source links that'll get you started on your own exploration on looking into all of the nuance and details to what we talked about down in the description. So if you go down there, it's going to take you to the pages that I was just showing you so you can explore that further so you can better understand what's going on, especially if you are somebody that is considering using the new YouTube's new creator music service. So if you have any questions or anything like that about that, feel free to just drop them in the chat of this, you know, of, of this particular uh, video. Of course, if you have any questions, you know, right now, feel free to go ahead and ask them. But one of the things that, you know, my brother D said is that, you know, plan for the future. You know, YouTube giveth and YouTube taketh away. One thing that I've always been a big, um, you know, uh, uh, messenger for is, you know, if you don't own the rights to it, then, you know, you, you, if you don't own the rights to it, you haven't been given the rights to it, or you haven't purchased the rights to it, then you, you know, you probably shouldn't use it. But in this case, YouTube is allowing you to purchase and the rights holders are allowing you to purchase the rights to it. So, you know, it is in alignment there. It's just the only thing that really makes me the most worried about it is the, uh, you know, the risk of the rights holders actually updating their information to where it can blow back on us as, you know, the content creators. So the creator classroom says, do you think that, um, do you think that we'll have an issue getting sound effects and free music from audio library after they pub, uh, put this in? So, um, what's going to happen is for people that are not in the partner program, they can still use audio library music. Um, but the audio library music has actually been moved into creator music. So because of that, um, they are moving all of that stuff. So right now, you know, you can still use it, but once they actually get all of this in there, because, you know, I think you're monetized already. So since you're already in the partner program, then you should get access to this as long as you're in the U.S. or one of the other countries that they'll be deploying this to later. So because of that, um, you know, you will have access to all of that stuff. It'll just be in creator music now instead of audio library or along with um, audio library if they keep that open for, uh, for, for newer content creators that are not in the partner program yet. Um, let's see here. It doesn't sound worth it to me. So a physics theory, uh, theology nerd, I'm just going to share some of your opinions here too, says, um, doesn't sound worth it to me, but my content doesn't really rely on music anyway. Um, let's see here. Shark Scrapper says, if you don't have the right to use it, don't. 
Drew Project says, um, how about cover songs? Is this gonna change anything for people like me? So with cover songs, and you can find this in that same documentation that I have linked down in the description, but cover songs already have the arrangements where you can do revenue sharing there. So um, so they do have that. So once you're in the partner program, you'll be able to, uh, you know, you'll be able to uh, do that with not as, you know, without like really worrying about it. Um, let's see here, too many hands in the cookie jar when it comes to music. Yeah, so Epidemic Sound, yeah, they're still, you know, cause you're licensing the music over there, you're paying for it, you know, all of that good stuff. And they're giving you the, um, you know, the license to use that. Um, so absolutely. And then we've got, can we still use Harris? Absolutely, you know, Stream Beats is, is still good. Creator Mix is still good. Like, you know, like everything is still good. But what I'm saying is just, you know, when it comes to using creator music, which is YouTube service, and, and the whole like real thing with that, that everybody's getting excited about is that they're able to use popular music. But, you know, dealing with epidemic sound versus tapping into like big business music industry, total two totally different things so you know because of that i just wanted to make sure that you know that you guys are aware of uh you know kind of like the risks involved so to speak um let's see here okay so um so yeah so thank you so much for uh hanging out i hope this added value to you in some way stay safe out there and um if you are you know just you know, coming in here for the first time, um, I make content like this all the time. So make sure that you subscribe. I actually have a new segment coming out tomorrow where I keep content creators like you up to date with everything that impacts you as a content creator. So make sure that you check that out and also hit my videos page if you wanna learn how to grow your YouTube channel as well, because um, I have an entire YouTube channel filled with that type of information. So thank you so much for hanging out. Everybody have an awesome uh, rest of your week and I will see you tomorrow. Oh, and watch this video right here. It's something that YouTube thinks you're gonna like. <laughs>